Um, first of all, I want to thank uh, Harper and the student body, PTA, uh, and especially Adrian, Simon Carlson, for having me back to direct my fourth show here. Uh, oh, I'm Scott. Um, I also want to thank Mr. Shimmick and his class for building this fantastic stage. We had no idea whether we were going to be able to be indoors or not. So I said, let's just build a stage. And they said, OK, let's do it. So that's awesome. Um, I want to thank cast and crew, and especially Ashley and Hannah Boone for uh, helping uh, put my idea for the set into, uh, into reality. Awesome. Um, I want to thank all the cast and crew for the hard work that they put in. Uh, the show is very different than it was a week ago, and they put in a lot of hard work to make it awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, lastly, I wanted to thank the theater department at the high school and Eric Richardson for the lighting that we have tonight to make it possible. And uh, it's awesome that it's almost November and we are actually able to do this outside. So I hope you guys enjoy the show. Uh, the bigger and better the audience, the better these guys are. So. Interact, get wild, all right? Hello, and welcome to the Brothers Grimm Spectacular Fun. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday! It's extreme! See monster slaying action as the three-headed pig battles the wolf of lot in a bone-crushing cage match of death. They'll huff and they'll puff and they'll kick some iron. Ah! What we are going to do here today? Oh right, and then the battle you've all been waiting for: Snow White versus Sleeping Beauty in a mud wrestling death match. Who is the toughest of them all? No, stop! We're not doing that. Ooh, no, no, I got it. Flames. Flames. No, 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 stop. Jasmine. You're wearing them out. Hi. But I want you to know something, okay? You are no longer extreme in my book. Got that? No longer extreme. This is the Brothers Grimm Spectacular Thon. That's right, folks. And what we are about to do here today is going to blow your minds. You're never going to be the same. Forget your marriage. Forget your children. I mean, if you haven't already. A little background to begin. The brothers Grimm were brothers named Grimm. They are dead. But in the period before they died, the brothers Grimm wrote 209 fairy tales that we love and know today. Well, they didn't actually write them. The brothers Grimm did not write 209 fairy tales that we know and love today. They were frogs. You should dig up their bodies and spit on their corpses. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that they're collectors of stories. Never mind that last part. And these stories have become extremely popular. We all know them today. Of course, they've all been changed by the mouse to feed their enormous octopus-like animation empire, which sucks the light out of existence and crushes your soul in a death grip of happy, happy songs and talking objects. I can't even speak the name loud because they're looking for me to see me right now. But you'll never take me alive, Imagineers! You know they own Star Wars too, right? <laughs> They're everywhere. Okay. Well, what we are going to do for you today is return these fairy tales to their original glory. We've assembled the greatest group of actors the world has ever seen. I thought there was supposed to be catering back there. There's like a beef thing somewhere. Where? I don't know. In the back, somewhere. Or is there anything to drink? No. Um, our actors are so insanely talented that I don't see it. Do you see the radiator? No. Oh, wait. No. There's probably just somebody sitting on it. Move that. Oh, here it is. Hey! Anyway, in the short time we have today, we are, our crack with actors are going are gonna to return these very tales to their original glory. Wait, uh, how many fairy tales are we doing? We only have an hour. Oh yeah, well, no, we're doing all 209. Yeah. But that's like three stories per minute. Or a different number if you actually know math. 
and we're keeping the original endings intact. Blood, violence, death, people being cut open with scissors. And to make it more difficult, we're performing them all as originally intended, which is that it's all one giant super mega juicy story. You ready? Yes! Wait, no, I need to go throw up. Excuse me. Well, I don't know when she'll be back, so. Once upon a time, there was a girl who was raised by wolves and whose mother died in childbirth and who was abandoned by her father who could spin straw into gold and made a deal with a series of elves if they would help him make shoes. There's also a talking fox in there somewhere. And she was beautiful. Because no one cares about ugly people. Whoa. Point me to an ugly Disney princess. Snow White. She's literally the fairest of them all. Mm, I don't really see it. I mean, she's got that whiny voice. Anyway, there was a girl. And she was poor. Oh, I am poor. Dirt. <laughs> poor. She couldn't even afford dirt. Dirt for sale, dirt for sale. I shall flood the ground with my tears. Stop it, you're getting it wet. If only I could live in a boot or make some deal with elves or talk to a talking fox. Oh. Excuse me, but I can't help but hear your tale of misery and woe. Tell you what, I will grant you your heart's desire if you give me one small thing. That sounds like a great bargain. I won't even ask what that small thing is because I'm so trusting. Excellent. I vanish. What a nice lady. Hey there, hot stuff. Oh, wait. That's me. <laughs> Are you a prince? Of darkness. <laughs> oh, that's clever. Now, I happen to overhear your tale of misery and woe. Well, actually, I just... I decided to help you. Just sign this one small contract, and you shall conceive a daughter. So beautiful that she will be selected to be in a game show with 22 other women to compete for the love of... Done. <laughs> what a busy street. There. You're hideous and deformed. That's hurtful. But I have a great bargain for My this. stomach recoils in horror as you approach. I get that a lot, but... Why has God's creation been so perverted? Do you want to hear my offer or not? Sure. Go ahead. You're probably trustworthy, and I don't judge people by their appearances. I shall make you rich. Rich beyond your wildest dreams. Really? Because I have some pretty wild dreams. Whoa. This is... Seriously messed up. You need help. A lot of work has gone into this, and it's disturbing. Well, I also want a Tom Cruise clone. When he was 23 and not into that weird stuff. He was still into that. He just wasn't advertising. Well, then I want a Tom Cruise clone. That I can control. I shall make you rich. Not rich enough to afford a jet fighter and steal a skin grab from a famous actor and grow a clone in a vat. But rich enough. And, and I only ask one small thing in return. Okay, cool. You don't want to know what the small thing is? No, I'm okay. Um, well, all right. It was a good day for the girl. She fell in love with the prince. Hey, you're hot. I am hot. Let's get married. <laughs> Score. She grew very rich. Oh, look, a giant pot of gold. What are the odds? Score. And she thinks she needs a child. Um, how did that happen? Well, you see, kids, when a prince and a princess love each other very much... Through magic. Magic of the devil. And that's where babies come from. <laughs> ah! The baby's coming! Dang it, I mean, push or something? You're not helping! I'm not trying to. I'm gonna be over here. The miracle of childbirth. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you! Focus your anger! Focus your anger! Ah! Yes! Sweet! Throw over here. She looks like you. A, a little? Give her back. Years passed, and she grew into a beautiful teenager, Rapunzel. <coughs> I want to use the name Rapunzel. What about Amber? That was the name of your ex-girlfriend. Amber was nice to me. <laughs> Are you going to wear your hair like that? Shut up. We're going to have dinner soon, so wash your hands. You can't tell me what to do. Don't talk to your mother that way. She sold her soul to the devil just to have you. I don't care. I didn't ask you for I'm going out. You're not walking out of this house like that, young lady. I do what I want. You don't know me. I've had enough of this parenting. I'm gonna go golfing. <laughs> Real money you got there, Mom. Well, you don't get to be choosy when you fall in love at first sight. And just then, I have returned. Your time is up.
you know, I was in the neighborhood and I was thinking how I forgot something like 18 years ago. And then I was like, oh right, I gotta get that thing from the girl. And then here I was, right at your house. What do you want? Your, your child. child. Mom. What? How many deals did you make? Just three. I may have promised your hand in marriage to a talking rabbit or something. What? I was young. I need the money and the baby and the prince. But just the money and the baby. This is why I'm in therapy. She's mine, witch! Enchantress! I tell you what, girl. If you can guess my name, I will release you from our bargain. It's Rumpelstiltskin. It's Rumpelstiltskin. Seriously! This is like the fifth time! And the little man stomped his foot so hard that it fell through the floor. And when he tried to pull it out, he broke in half. Seriously? That's how I die? I get my foot caught and break in half trying to get it out. Pretty much, yeah. That's gotta be like the stupidest way to die ever. Uh, anyway. Rumpelstiltskin broke himself in half. Do it. I need pie now! I'm not cleaning that up. Ew. Now that that horrid little man is gone, I will take Rapunzel. Um, excuse me? I'm the devil! I have powers! I have more claim of her than some stupid little witch! For the last time, the Enchantress! Whatever, witch! Alright, let's go. Oh, you want some, huh? No, let's get out of here! Shut up, honey. I'm watching this. Go, devil! Expelliarmus! That's a witch's spell! But I curse you! Yeah! Fine, fine. This is so stupid. How about this? If you sign this slightly destroyed contract, I will let you take Rapunzel. Oh, this looks legit. Here. <laughs> I disappear in a cloud of brimstone. <laughs> Come on, Rapunzel. Where are we going? To a great tower over here where nobody can get you. Yeah. Run along, dear. Mom, I don't want to go with you, Enchantress. Well, I don't want to have a spoiled little brat, but sometimes you don't get what you want. So, the Enchantress took Rapunzel and locked her away in a high tower without stairs or doors, which, well, that actually seems a lot more reasonable nowadays. Well, anyway, as for the girl and her prince... I'm back from my gulping trip. What did I miss? The forces of evil battled it out for your daughter's soul. Cool. I'm out of here. They lived happily ever after. But our story is not even remotely finished. No, wait. It is finished. But it's not yet begun. That's right. So let's go back to that girl, Rapunzel's mother. You might be familiar with her mother. Wait, Greta, what are you doing out here? Nothing. You've just seemed so moody lately, as if something were bothering you. Our next story, Hansel and Gretel, or the original horror movie. <laughs> I'm haunted, Hansel. Yeah! I too am haunted. Perhaps we ought to go into the woods where it's dark and scary. This is the part of the show where we ask for audience participation. So we're picking one lucky audience member to stand in for all you people. You. Me? Oh. Yes, I pointed at you. Okay. Come on, we don't have all day. Have you been enjoying the show? Uh, sure. <laughs> About the first scene. We don't care. Now, audience out there, this person represents you. She's all your hopes and dreams wrapped together in a cheetah loving snap puddle. So, what am I supposed to do? Just watch a show like you'd watch a horror movie. Got it. All right, let's get on to the story. Hansel, I'm worried. Why? I overheard a wicked stepmother saying she's going to take us in the woods feeding by wolves. Yeah, she does that. I say we go into the woods ourselves. Okay, let's go. Here we are in the dark and scary woods, alone. This is not good. This is not good. Something's not right. You're just a chicken. I feel so strange, Hansel. What's that? Ah! Looks like a house? It's made out of candy. This isn't suspicious at all. 
Do you want to try the door? Do you think I should? If only I just had some kind of clue about what to do. No, don't go in there. Why would you go in? Don't go in there. Huh, let's go in there. <laughs> it's dark in here. Is that your hand? Is that your hand? Why would you go in there? I said, don't go in there. Are you eating my house? <laughs> oh, I'm so disappointed in today's young people. You think you could build a house out of candy and nobody's gonna disturb it? But no, two beautiful brats have to come along and start munching on the walls. In my day, the kids do enough to leave uh, the house alone. You don't have to teach you to a lesson. What kind of a lesson? But first, don't you want some more candy? No, she's just batting you up. So, Hansel and Gretel stayed with the witch and ate and ate. Why does my cologne smell like gravy? Look, she gave me this apple to put in my mouth. Isn't that nice? Oh, I need some help cleaning out my oven. Oh, I can help with that. Great, come on, Hansel. It's Hansel. All right, Hansel. Oh, hey, I dropped a quarter. Can you pick it up? A quarter? Eat this, witch! Ah! <laughs> yes! Woo! You did it! She's not dead. She's right behind you. Look behind you, idiot. She's not dead. She's How about right we eat the rest of the house? Good idea. Ah! Ah! Oh, I'm melting! Oh, wait. I'm burning! So, they made it. But the horror wasn't over. Because early childhood trauma can affect a lot of fairy tale heroes, and Hansel, well, let's just say he developed a problem. Gretel, you want to try fairy dust? No, Hansel. You have a problem, and you need help! But it lets you fly! It doesn't let you fly, Hansel. Drugs are bad. But these are natural from ground up fairies. I'll show you. And he jumped off a cliff. What? I can fly? Maybe? It's up to you, audience. If you clap hard enough, Hansel will live. Come on, people out there. Dinner time. No, no. 
we are doing the story as written. Snow White wakes no, Snow White wakes up and cleans the house for the seven dwarves and get, then gets poisoned by an apple, and then a prince comes along and falls in love with her because she's unconscious and can't talk back. Um, you know, maybe these fairy tales are a little antiquated? This is a classic. What girl out there didn't want to clean the house for seven freaky bearded dudes and then have no choice in who she was going to marry? Come on. Okay, so um, sometimes the classics are, how do I put this, they're bad. Can I go back to being Sleeping Beauty now? She's alive! Kill her! I thought you were supposed to be Snow White. Can anyone really tell the difference? <laughs> no, not really. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that these stories need some spicing up here and there. A, a new angle, you know, a, a new way of putting them together. Fine, fine. I don't care anymore. I'm sure this dwarf here will do a better job at narrating than me. Go ahead. Take my place. Sounds good. Wait, I didn't. You're going to be dwarf one. Am I still Snow White? <laughs> You're whatever you want to be. Call me. So, once upon a time, there was a house filled with dwarves that worked in the mines beneath the surface of the earth, swore revenge against the upworld walls. Curse you, upworlders! One day, they came home to find a beautiful girl sleeping in their bed. Hey, look! A giant hottie! She's huge! She's gonna eat me! Run for it! No, hold on! Dwarf number two. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of being a supporting character. See, I happen to be quite brilliant and know for a fact that this giant hottie has fallen under a curse to sleep for a hundred years. From my perspective, they're all the same. Anyway, the only way for this giant hottie to wake up is to receive a kiss from her true love, me. What are you doing? Fine. Hey, giant hottie, is it cool if I kiss you to wake you up from your coma? That was you. Well, how am I supposed to? What if you just did an air hug from six foot distance? Fine. It was love at first sight. Um, you're not what I expected. I'm better, baby. I'm the mighty dwarf Slappy, and I have come and rescued you from that evil curse that was. I wasn't under a curse or anything. I was just tired and sleepy, forcing you to sleep for a hundred years. I am your true love. Uh, this is where you break into song. I don't know the words. That's okay, but I'm down for you. This says I cook dinner and clean the house and leave all the thinking to my husband. It's a perfect marriage. This is disgusting. I'm a modern woman. Then I guess you're not going to live happily ever after then. Whatever. I'm going to tell the story my own. Fine. Hey, are y'all going to, like, need me anytime soon? Yes, we're starting over right now. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl. You're going to be Snow White this time. About day time! Yes! Oh, I've just been waiting for this moment, but I will rock this! beautiful in the entire game kingdom, but her stepmother was jealous. Snow White. Stepmother. Is that a zit I see on your face? You'd like that, wouldn't you? I do believe you're skipping your exercise routine. Not in your life, sister. These curves are tight like a racing yacht owned by a hip-hop mogul. <laughs> I think you should pluck your eyebrows. They're looking a bit puffy. No, they're fierce like a chain tiger with ghost pepper stuffed up his- Moving on. And the wicked stepmother went into her room and gazed into her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Well, certainly not you. And meanwhile, Snow White was only becoming more fierce. Work it, work it. I do believe it's over for you, Snow White, for... I have lots of money and been through lots of plastic surgery in Hollywood. I have tucked, sucked, and vacuumed every inch of my body with a diamond laser. And I've had most of my tattoos lasered off. So now I am more beautiful than even you. Unlikely. Begin. Enough. Snow White is still the fiercest. Dang it. How about an apple as a peace offering? How about I take you out with my martial arts skills? Oh, it's on! Not to interrupt or anything, but I was just in the neighborhood 
looking for a hot girl in a coma to make out with, and whoa, chick right? And it was a glorious battle. Expelliarmus! Expelliarmus yourself! Go Snow White! A titanic struggle of good and evil, purity versus corruption, <coughs> until finally. I shall transform myself into a black dragon! <laughs> no, that was in the Sleeping Beauty movie. I, I thought we were doing Sleeping Beauty, though. No, this is Snow White. Oh, Eat this witch! Ah, I'm melting! No, I'm bleeding! Ah. <laughs> that was so hot. Like somebody else I know, Prince. You're very forward. I'm a modern woman. Come on, let's get married. And, <laughs> and they lived happily ever after and avoided traditional gender roles. The seven little dwarves cooked for them, cleaned the house, and did all the other jobs that Snow White was supposed to do. The end. That was enlightened. But the witch was not dead. It was only a flesh wound. No! Stop! We're doing this without any Monty Python references. Tis but a scratch. I said stop it! Okay, chill. Um, anyway, the witch felt bad, so she decided to make a house out of candy and eat children instead. There aren't many career options for me. But the true secret origin here is of dwarf number two, which brings us to the darkest, most disturbing fairy tale ever told. <laughs> Faithful Johannes. Never heard of it. There's a reason for that. Welcome to Faithful Johannes, the original psychological thriller. Okay, so, um, once upon a time, there was a noble servant named Faithful Johannes, who served his king faithfully, as you might glean from his name. Hey everybody, check out my servant, Faithful Johannes. You're too kind, Majesty. He's the best. All your other servants are garbage. Faithful Johannes would do anything for me. Eat a bug. Do it. Of course, sir. He loves it. All your other servants are losers. Nobody like Faithful Johannes here. Slap yourself in the face for me. Amazing. Johannes loved his life. This is great. Nothing like eating bugs and slapping myself in the face for the king. But one night, he was visited by a talking raven. Psst. Yo, Johannes, who's that? There's about to be three attempts on the king's life. You want to stop him? You listen to me. Are you a talking raven? Yeah, shut up. So, attempt number one. There's going to be a magic horse. The king is going to think he's pretty sweet. But, if the king gets on that horse, the king is going to drop from about 2,000 feet. Now, here's what you're going to do. You're going to take this gun, and you're going to shoot that horse in the face. Got it? If we were in a fairy tale, I didn't even know we had guns. You do not. You do now. But remember, if you tell anybody you heard this from me, I'll turn you to stone. Okay. Shoot that horse. King's dead meat. <laughs> the next day. Well, my favorite Johannes, let's go for a lovely stroll. Of course, sir. Something the matter? Not at all. I'm fine. What is that? I'm a magical horse. What the heck? I didn't like the look of that horse, sir. That was an amazing horse. Why would you do that? Uh, stress at home. Sorry. Man, you got problems. <laughs> Later that night... Psst. Yo, Johannes, come here. See you again? Attempt number two is coming tomorrow at the king's wedding rehearsal. I don't believe you. That horse was innocent, and I killed him. I killed him. The king's wedding shirt is cursed. If he puts it on, he'll burn it out. How do I know you're telling the truth? You don't. <laughs> the next day... Welcome, friends. It's so nice to see all of you, most of you, coming from the plague. Today is a celebration. I love this big guy. Come here, you big galoot. I love you more, honey bear. Even our nicknames are cute. This is the happiest day of my life. And as a present, I made you something. I saw this myself. I hate this shirt! I hate it! What the heck? It's not your color, sire. It's an affront against fashion. <laughs> oh, honey bear. I'm never gonna try again. That night, I don't want to hear from any talking raven.
students tonight. Yo, Johanna. No, no, get out! Tomorrow, the queen is going to die. Stop it! She's gonna be poisoned. And the only way for you to stop it is to suck three drops of blood from the queen's breast. What? Upper chest region? Still. Fine. Don't do it. She'll die. No difference to me. But remember, don't tell nobody nothing. <laughs> the next day. I had a rough night remembering that shirt. The day is not about the terrible charm of yesterday. Today is about putting a happy face on and and Oh no, honey bear, are you alright? Is there a doctor in the house? Can anyone save the queen's life? Anyone at all? Oh, this is terrible. If only someone could... What the heck? Thanks, I feel better. Dude, Johannes, explain yourself. I, uh... That is it, your sense of death for being a jerk. Where's my guillotine? Wait, I've always served you faithfully, and there was this talking raven, and she was threatening me and telling me to... And just then, Johannes turned into a statue. Because when a magic raven says stuff to you, you better listen. Okay, that was mildly traumatic, but not super traumatic. Ten years passed, and every day the king would stare at the statue of faithful Johannes inside. Ugh, oh, if only there was some way to bring you back. No one eats bugs or slaps themselves in the face for me anymore. But just then, a ghostly voice emanated from the statue. There is one way to bring me back. What is it? I'll do anything. Take what you love most in the world. That would be my two boys. I love my two boys so, so much. They're just so amazing. You're the best, Papa. We love you too, Daddy. And chop off their heads and smear their blood on me. Done. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. You're alive. Air hug. And the king and Johannes lived happily ever after. <laughs> what did I just witness? Well, um, that's the fairy tale, right there. He kills his children to bring back his servant? A good servant is really hard to find. <laughs> Plus, you can always make more kids. Uh, okay, fine. Um, but Johannes resurrects the kids later because he's got superpowers now. And then one of those kids runs away from home, becomes a dwarf, and lives in the mines. Happy. Wow. That is messed up. Yeah, it is. Well, I think we're running out of time, so... We didn't get to Little, Little Red Riding Hood or the Devil's Grandmother or the Frog Prince. We've done the important ones, though. What? Aren't you forgetting something?